we've heard at least four companies contribute code to Sonic, and I'm sure there's tons more. Some random grad student in Helsinki, who knows, right? And uh, what's gonna give me some peace of mind that you know your daily builds and all this churn that's going on is, I'm not gonna get angry calls from my users that, oh, you've run into some problem with uh, deploying Sonic uh, with all the, all the effort that's been going on. I'll take that first, and or someone else. Dennis, do you want to? Um, I, I think I answered these similar questions during my talk. Um, I, I would expect, you know, um, initially when we deploy, we may see, find some issues, software bug, and so on, um, which should be normal, right? Um, what we do we need is we need uh, the framework to be built up to quickly um, identify the issues, detect the problem, and then to quickly fix it. So I think that's uh, number one is the framework. Number two, certainly you need uh, more testing. So we have to use all kinds of tests. We have a simulated uh, test bed, as uh, Manlox just uh, introduced, uh, that could be very useful. And we also have the real test bed um, to do identical configuration, traffic flow for our production network. Okay. Yeah, I would say it, it is definitely a multi-pronged effort. As you can see, we have active uh, innovation happening in this space, a lot of investment there. Um, each of the daily builds of Sonic actually goes through a BVT, uh, where we're running it against a bunch of uh, example switches in the Microsoft lab. We've been looking for other places to host those as well. Um, you can see that there have been a lot of contributions to that test set. One of Additional test is one of the things we definitely need more of, and so we're looking for lots of contributors there if there are people interested in, in making contributions to that. From a developer experience, we again recommend that you know, developers test their things out before they start deploying them. And so for example, we've tried to make that easy um, using the P4 uh, uh, data plane emulation with SIDOP P4 running on top of that lets you get essentially a switch, multiple switches even, running on your developer box. So you can actually test out your applications across multiple uh, sonic virtual switches um, before you start to deploy anything. Um, as we talked about last year in conjunction with Docker, uh, we figured out how to use Swar Docker Swarm to manage the deployment of containers out onto sets of Sonic switches. So again, with that standard DevOps uh, container methodology, uh, if you have uh, what we call health monitors or watchdogs on your network, you could orchestrate those as part of Swarm so that the containers are being rolled out to your switches. And if there's a problem, those lifesight monitors would detect it and can actually do an automatic rollback of the containers to your previous version. Um, so there is no one magic bullet that makes it safe, but the community as a whole working to build better uh, test frameworks to create ways that it's easy for developers to both innovate and test their, their code. Um, and then ease of deployment to roll out changes, roll them back uh, through the Sonic containerization framework. Um, those are the ways that we think that it's, it's safe to take this stuff up to cloud scale, and, and those are the techniques that we've been leveraging at Microsoft and Alibaba and others uh, as we've done this deployment. One more point I add, um, for the ones who are new in Sonic communities, we have uh, four types of tests going on. So first one is PTF, which is a test the test on the side API level. Whenever there's a site drop, a new implementation, we use PTF to gauge the quality of site. Second is um, unit test um, of Sonic. Actually, it's um, every single uh, small features. We have a hard requirement for the development and developers and the contributors uh, to develop the uh, unit, unit test with it um, uh, through so this uh, Google unit test platform. The third type is actually integration test through this um, soft switch, uh, which is system level, uh, a level above this unit test when you're checking. Every checking, every build, we are testing your feature using this uh, soft switch without hardware end-to-end -end, um, function any test. The last one is a whole test by setup. Actually, we are running uh, nightly in Microsoft that uh, many end-to-end -end scenarios, more, uh, more ports set up, real traffic going through. Every night we have um, nightly test. So we're also uh, spending effort and calling out for contributions in the uh, community to uh, work, uh, like, um, uh, work more on the test cases, contribute cases, and uh, try the software and report issues and report uh, uh, fixes.
Thank you. Uh, so my question is uh, related to the you know the the sigh itself. Uh, maybe some maybe because you are the experts, you can answer the question. My query is better. So uh, and barefoot is also over there, right? So so I mean one way to define the interface between uh, the NOS and the switch. I mean uh, anybody of any any of you can answer that. So uh, like one way to i mean which is the ideal way to define the interface between two you know entities is to come with a, define a data model right and then generate apis from there right size approach has been just you, they chose c language and then just defining the apis directly the, as a you know, as a the function calls right so i mean and that barefoot is or that they are trying to define a data model and then generate apis from that right so why not you guys are not choosing to move to p4 and why is sticking with Psi itself, right? And the com now you can compare Psi and P4 and tell me why you're not moving to P4. I mean, not, not even thinking of it, right? So. I think that's that's probably a better question for <laughs> for other folks. But uh, like I said, right, right now, these are two kind of uh, different ways. And there's some intersections between P4 and Psi. I think Psi definitely helps to fill that la layer where we're trying to start off with basic common functionality and make sure that everybody sort of calls a switch in the same way, right? Uh, you know, later on, once you're trying to do advanced functionality, right, how those two things converge, I think right, those are discussions that are taking place. Yeah, actually, that's a good discussion. We should have one afternoon. We, we have one in the afternoon exactly about that. How can we combine programmable, uh, programmable devices with SII? And I think that it is, it is doable. Um, Sai is kind of data-driven API. We first define the object which is router, which is an object, and then we create the API for the router. So um, it is uh, a data-driven API. That is right at the beginning. We start a different way, but after some evolution, uh, uh, we come to a conclusion that before defining the API, we should define the model, how, we can, how this object should behave, and only then derive the API. And this is the way API uh, are derived. Um, why not to use P4 API? Because when you're saying P4, you're referring to P4 runtime? So uh, basically, I'm from Geneva Networks. So to give in a context, right? So I also I'm in part of the Frontend Working Group. So it's like the way to define the you know the one the model which uh, Barefoot chose or Barefoot chose was to define a model and then generate the APIs from that. And Sai went ahead with definitely looking at what Switch ASIC can do and then try to come up with a, uh, APIs for every feature which ASICs are supporting, right? So in Juniper, we have very fully programmable ASIC, you know, just like Tofino, we call it, you know, you know, equally or maybe more programmable. I mean, that's a debatable, but. So we see that, you know, this SAI APIs we want to use for our platform, it's like very difficult to, you know, I mean, it, like, keep on adding more on APIs, you know, for more and more features. I mean, this, the model doesn't look very scalable for really programmable ASICs. Better way to do, define a model, that's the, the way P4.org is doing, and then then it APIs are, you know, come with the P4 runtime, which is actually not, which, which is actually target independent, and even protocol independent, right? So that's the model where, you know, industry should go, and I think sticking with Sai somehow, in my opinion, and actually Juniper's, in, you know, not Juniper, in my, my personal opinion is, you know, we are not going in the right direction. I mean, uh, that's why my that's why my question was from for, from all of you who are actually you know are really uh, proponents of Sai and. Uh, I think it depends maybe on uh, where you're coming from because you kind of come in from the OEM vendor standpoint. It's one position versus having this bare metal switch OS that's supporting multiple vendors, multiple ASICs. Uh, so it's it's I mean it's quite possible that for an OEM vendor maybe that's not the best approach, right? But uh, in, that's true that right not every OEM vendor when they have their own OS is using side because in fact they have their own, their own chips, right? They're not using merchants. So okay. I think my answer is 
going to be a couple of multifaceted. So the first thing is that I think of SI as an attempt to create a standardization of the typical things that people need to do uh, when they're doing internet protocol forwarding. Um, so you could go create a whole new network architecture with a totally different protocol format, and, and SI might not be the best way to express that, but there's a bunch of stuff that in the internet architecture, the kind of things that people controlling switches need to do, and SI standardizes that. Now SI, again, is its own open source, and so anyone is free to make contributions to that or help us refine those uh, data models. It did come from very much a data model start. Um, the thing that's been very important part of SI is to have ways that ASIC vendors can express the unique capabilities beyond the standard set of things that people want to do in their forwarding packets in a way that then the higher layers of the network management applications, the things running on the switch as well as the larger network management applications running uh, elsewhere, can use and, and control and take advantage of. And so SI originally came at this in the form of SI extension headers, um, and we have a large number of experimental ones of those, and some of those experimental ones are now being promoted into, into essentially the standard. Um, we've also done a bunch of work with, with P4, and um, you know, there's a proposal for P4 lets out there that essentially these extended capabilities of the data path beyond the base SI spec could be described in a P4 let. Um, and again, with APIs coming from that, uh, you know, we think P4 is a great way to describe that data plane model. You saw in, in my talk that we used to describe this new tunneling capability uh, that we created. Um, so we think it is a reasonable way to describe uh, a data plane, but uh, it's nice for people writing network management applications to have some fairly standard set of things that, that they need to control and write against. Um, and so Sai has attempted to say, hey, look, here's sort of the most common things that you're going to find in any data path, and let's just standardize those as part of the Sai headers. Um, you know, it could be a fully programmable data plane, which again, Sai.p4 is a way of, uh, of configuring all that stuff, and you could amend and extend Sai.p4 then to create the additional capabilities that you want. Um, anytime you are creating a new data path, there is going to have to be new network management application work done in order to configure and control that. And so really what my goal is, is to make sure that there are machine readable ways of doing that, um, that we can get introspection around what the capabilities of the ASIC are so the management software can take advantage of it or not if it's available, and that it's easy to then extend and roll out new functionality. I mean, those are the things that are critical to me. I see Sai as just kind of standardizing the chunk of stuff that just about everybody agrees to. So uh, I just want to add uh, one comment right, from the end user perspective. Right? We, we like SI, we like Open Sonic, but we are not bound into specific ASIC. Uh, we certainly will love the P4, but there's some other ASIC you know, not running P4 yet. So. Oh, hey guys. Um, we talked about moving Sonic into the WAN. Uh, what are the biggest challenges with doing that? Um, one of the things that distinguishes the WAN is one support for a bunch more protocols, MPLS, ISIS, um, uh, additional features on BGP potentially. And so we, there are more protocols that we need to support in that class of device as opposed to a data center switch. Um, so some of it is, is, is control plane uh, protocol development. Uh, other bits of work, another distinguishing characteristics of, of what I'd call a RAN router is diversity of physical interfaces. And so making sure that we have platform adaptation layers that can deal with the specific optical modules and optical systems that tend to be put into, into core WAN class devices. That's an area where there's more work to be done. And then finally, um, routing table scaling. So typically routing tables in these class routers is very large, uh, you know, upwards of a million routes. And we need to make sure that the performance of the system is sufficient to actually be able to program and update that many routes in a reasonable convergence time. So. Are you volunteering? No. And yes, it sounds like you're interested. <laughs> Come, <laughs> get involved. <laughs> So uh, related to that, uh, I had a question about uh, scaling and performance. And I was wondering about the, like you mentioned, a million routes. Um, and obviously, that's a lot of interaction with the ASIC. And even other features, I mean, 
what sort of, have you done any performance testing? I know it varies per platform and all, but uh, you know, what can we expect as far as route updates or address learning or you know, whatever uh, on Sonic platforms? So, so actually it is work in, prog in progress now. This is exactly what happened when you take something that from, from the beginning and make it, make, try to make a product out of it. So there are some work and we are trying to improve like introducing a bulk operation in SAI, uh, et cetera, uh, separating the, um, um, the database into multiple instances in order to uh, have multiple contexts uh, to be, uh, to, that we, we can access them for multiple contexts. It is work uh, uh, in progress. Um, I can, we didn't finish, finish that and again, everyone here, uh, uh, welcome to, to join us and help us with it. My short summary is the number changes so frequently that I'm not going to even quote one because we've been seeing an improvement in the regression and improvement in regression. It's one of the things that we look at as part of the daily build um, and it's very much an area of active innovation and we got a bunch of people working across the platform and prove it. Did, did Alibaba see or do any testing on you know updates and uh, performance? Um, so the performance, <coughs> do you mean the performance for like uh, FIB program speed? Well, that's actually it. I'm, I mean, I, I know the performance of pa packets through the chip. That's really not a function of Sonic. Yeah, we, we, we did a lot of um, performance testing and also the <coughs> optimization as well, right? Uh, and also depends on what use, uh, use case, the uh, different uh, deployment scenario for the performance. Actually, the requirements are different. So, for, for example, in our data center, there's not too many that are routes. So the program speed uh, is not that critical. Um, <clears throat> back to the question, when we talk about the one, talk about the peering. So if we want to implement the Sonic routers, the performance will become uh, super critical for us. So we we'll need a, uh, we, we want to move to that direction, but certainly we will need a more evaluation. That's not only from the Sonic perspective, also depends on the SDK itself. Hey, Gohan, do you want to say a, a, it won't be worse than thousands of, how many, th do you, are you willing to quote a number on thousands of route per second that we can program? I want to get this on the mic, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think with the, the LinkedIn did a lot of uh, work on improving the, um, the performance of the routing turns. I think the, we input both the uh, Sonic stack as well as uh, the size stack. Uh, um, I think it's like uh, um, 5x uh, uh, improvements from the previous version, I think in the last We've year. made a lot of improvements. I guess the question yes. is, will we quote a number? And if we're not willing to quote a number I know, right I, now, I, I it's I changing so I much. I cannot I'm, remember I'm the number top of my head, but okay. I think we did a lot of uh, improvement on that, yes. It's All right, we're not going to quote a specific number, but people are interested. So if you go look at the build system, we've got the, the test system. Yeah, this. yeah, I won't quote a specific number, but it's what Barefoot is most in control with, which is the P4 program, the chip, the drivers, uh, those things that we've tried to look at uh, as we were doing kind of testing with customers. So on all these fronts, we've done, we've done some work, again, without mentioning any specific numbers. Uh, you know, things like fast reboot, uh, some hardware-based assist for link failover, um, Try to expose some capabilities of the chip in this regard. Massive I see a blog amount. post coming up. Yeah, a massive amount of non commit there. <laughs> so. Uh, I think we can publish a number tomorrow. We have a number. We just do not remember that. Ah, okay. All right. So the comment there was that they actually have the numbers and they'll publish them, but uh, they just don't want to misquote them. Uh, yeah, you go ahead and then I'll. So, from a network management point of view, like if you are in a software sitting on top of like, you know, the whole network wide thing. Today, the programmability of Sonic is around like, you know, manipulating files like config dbjson or port config ini and, you know, mini graph and stuff like that, right? Speak a little this louder. Is, this is in line with like few other operating systems like, you know, in general, like Cisco, Zaristas, they have a big config I can push in one shot kind of thing. And Cumulus also has a bunch of files and they have some CLI. So what is the direction of uh, Sonic and how do you see an ideal network management software to be dealing with Sonic? This is a tough one to answer because this gets to the heart of the question of what is the rest of the network management system. 
So um, Sonic as a platform, it's pretty easy to control via a variety of mechanisms. So you can give it a standard CLI-based configuration thanks to the FRR and, and the Quag implementations like that. Um, you can also tie the Redis database directly into other network management applications. You talk about Minigraph. Um, Minigraph is actually a proper noun. It's an entity in the rest of our network management system. It's actually, we have a network graph service that holds the entire state of Microsoft's network. And essentially, the Minigraph that gets pushed down to the device is that little view of how this device connects to other devices. And so you see some of our network management systems and philosophy bleeding through. Um, we are not providing and we think a strength of Sonic is that we haven't provided there's only one way to talk to these things. It's actually very easy to extend Sonic to tie into whatever your network management application is. Alibaba has a very different network management stack than, than Microsoft does, and yet we're both able to use that platform and gain benefit from it. Um, so, so we're deliberately being open uh, to all these varieties. You know, Let it support open config. Let it support Yang. Let it support um, you know, as the user base wants. It can easily be extended to support those. I think this is a very, I mean, network management in general is very tough, right? Um, the biggest issue is for backer compatibility. Since in your network, you're going to have multiple vendors, legacy switch, and you have a, now you have your Sonic based switch. So certainly you don't want to uh, change your network management only for the Sonic. Right, so how to make your network management in general to work with uh, everything. So which means whatever we need to support today, either, either CLI, open config, or gRPC, actually we implement all this on the Sonic. So how to be interpreted with our existing management systems and also work with us, <coughs> the other vendors switch as well. So in Sonic community that we had some work to do that at the back end, trying to build the foundation so that you have the database, you have the pipeline, so that on the top of it, you can develop CLIs, you can develop REST APIs that um, can plug in. So to find the right solution for your management um, uh, toolings or services. So basically what we are doing is at the back end, we are plugging the, uh, the all the pipe and all the models to make it right. Able to do incremental change, save it to the DB, and to do the um, uh, to do the sanity check. But on top of it, it's really actually uh, differs uh, from the user aspect. Yeah. But we're open to support different models. One more question, and then we'll break Yeah. So my question is related to scale again, but not actually it's about the numbers. So it's about uh, design choices which you are making to make sure that you know you get, will get maximum FIB download rate. And uh, one specifically, maybe I would like your comment on is the choice of using containers to actually you know host all these services. So will do you see that in coming that you know coming in the way of actually this uh, increasing this you know FIB download rate? Uh, okay, that is the area I have the least concern with. So. Um, you know, container networking is is really fast, and we have quite a bit of experience with container networking, both from hosting containers in Azure as well as in the Sonic project, and we have not seen any problems there. The uh, container interprocess communication is very, very quick. hasn't been a problem at all. We find that to be a very good uh, composition. Um, you know, the concerns are more around uh, doing batching of updates as we go down through the switch state service orchestration daemon into SI, getting into the ASIC, making sure that, you know, the ASIC is being the ASICs are being programmed in the most efficient possible way. Um, those are the, those are where I see challenges at the up at the actual uh, network management application container layer. I think we're just fine. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, thank our panel and uh, for all their help. Oh. <laughs>